Thank you. Nice to see all so many familiar faces and friends and great to be here. I'm glad you are here. And nice to see so many people taking interest in their health. What, you know, what greater feeling to live without fear? You know what I mean? Who wants to go to doctors and have tubes put in the orifices of your body and running back and forth to the emergency room and tested and afraid, and afraid of dying or having strokes or running for a bus or, you know, or getting cancer or getting chemotherapy or stuck in a nursing home and able to turn yourself over in bed? And who wants to live like that and think like that? You want to just live life and be free and, and joyous and happy and creative and enjoy your life without, especially your later years, right? That's what this is all about. How could you not be a nutritarian? How could you not want to live to be your 100 years old with your full mental and physical capacity to be able to fully enjoy your life? In America here, we have the worst healthy life expectancy of all 17 most industrialized countries. The worst. I know what the word healthy life expectancy means. It means the quality of your life, particularly the 10 years before you die. You know what I mean? So the average American may live to be 78 or 80 years old, but the 10 years before they die, they're not really fully living. They're living half a shell of themselves. And they're miserable and unhappy. And the American diet doesn't just cause depression. It causes dysthymia, which means a lack of excitement about your life, a little bit semi-depressed and chronically. You can't think that clearly, but you kind of hate everybody. Who wants to happen to you, what happens to other Americans, especially when these advances in nutritional science over the last two decades is such a blessing to give us the power to have better health than is ever attainable in human history, and better than the blue zones. The blue zones just eat whatever foods around them, whatever's grown in that area, and they happen to do better than other people in other areas because they're eating mostly natural plants. They raise themselves, or they farm, or they're in their area. But we can do better than that. We can actually take the best foods and the best practices from multiple blue zones and multiple soils and multiple areas. We have actually you know, refrigerators and, and jet planes, and we can put together a diet style that's even more longevity promoting, promoting than our ancestors could have ever achieved especially living in different parts of the world, different climates. And nobody's taking advantage of this. So let me ask you a question. What percent of Americans are overweight? Do you know? 70, 60, 80, 68? All right, you know what? The, the US medical health authorities said five years ago that it was about 65% of Americans were overweight, but then two years ago they said it was 70%. But that's because they use a BMI of 25 as the demarcation line between normal weight and overweight. And therefore, using 25 as a demarcation line, it classifies about 70% of people as being overweight. But all blue zones, all long the populations, don't have a BMI below 25. They have a BMI below 23. Did you follow that? You know, a male can have a BMI up to 24 if he's muscular, but no female should have a BMI above 23 and expect to live a, long, a normal lifespan. If we use the 23 and a half or 23, 24 BMI as the demarcation line between normal weight and overweight, then we classify 89% of Americans as being overweight. Did you follow that? That's more accurate. Let's look for a second before we start this lecture. Let's just look for a second at that 11% of people of so-called normal weight, right? Are those really healthy people that are normal weight? No. no. Right, that's right. Not necessarily is the right answer because the majority of those people smoke cigarettes, use drugs, are depressed, have autoimmune diseases, are alcoholics, have occult cancers, have digestive disorders, have you know, some medical condition that's keeping them at a normal weight. If you're reflecting on the American diet that's so overweight causing, it's so lipo, lipotoxic, so deadly that anybody who's healthy and eats the American diet blows up like a balloon. The only people that are normal weight are people who are too sick. It's actually 
studied that about 2.6% of Americans, just 2.6% are a normal weight because they eat healthfully and they exercise regularly. 2.6%. So when you say what percent of Americans are overweight, let's reframe that question and say what percent of Americans are either overweight or sick? And that's like 97.5%. Did you get that? Okay. And this idea that there can be a healthy, overweight person is ridiculous. There's no such thing as healthy, overweight people. You can have a normal cholesterol, you cannot be diabetic, but fat on the body ages you prematurely and secretes toxic mediators and inflammatory compounds. For example, fat on the body secretes estrogen, and estrogen increases the risk of prostate cancer and breast cancer. If you're not a normal weight, you're not healthy. And if you're not a normal weight, you're not eating a healthy diet. You may think you are. You've been bamboozled into thinking something that's not true. Whatever that word means. <laughs> but whatever it means, you've got it. You see, I'll tell you the answer to this question. Oh, to that question. Advances in nutritional science live healthily to 100. I'll tell you the answer right now, so if you'd like, you could leave. Here's the answer. And if you can, write it down. The only thing proven in the history of science to slow aging and extend human lifespan is one thing. Moderate caloric restriction in an environment of micronutrient excellence. I'll say it one more time. You have to eat less calories moderately, not to become anorexic. Moderate caloric restriction while you obtain micronutrient adequacy or excellence. Better than adequacy, excellence. Because when you achieve micronutrient excellence, by the way, it naturally suppresses your appetite, and you start to want to eat the right amount of calories, and you lose weight till you get to your ideal weight. And moderate caloric restriction slows down your metabolism, and that's what I'm getting to here. We want to moderately caloric restrict, so we lose weight, and we moderately slow our metabolism. We want our metabolism to slow, because we want to be able to eat less food and not get too thin. Take my body, for example. I weigh about 147 pounds, let's say 150 pounds. I want to have that muscle. I want to be able to ski and do chin-ups and do my sports and be strong. I don't want to get too much thinner than this. But I want to slow my aging process and live to be 100. So I want to moderately caloric restrict, eat a little less calories. And so if I eat, if my basal metabolic rate is, let's say, 1,500 calories a day, but I need 1,500 calories a day to maintain this weight, if I eat 1,600 or 1,550, a little bit extra calories, well, 50 calories a day extra for 365 days a year, that's about three extra pounds a year times 10 years would have gained 30 pounds. It would just take 15 years off my life shoot, overshooting my, meta, my basal metabolic rate with too many calories. Just a quarter of a bagel extra took, third, took 15 years off my life. What if, on the other hand, I undershoot my calories a little bit? Instead of 1,500, I do 1,450. Do I lose weight? Do I become anorexic? Do my bones melt away? Do my muscles get weaker? What? What? Right. Here's what happens. Right. You're brilliant. This lady in the second row said that the metabolism slows a little to prevent me from losing weight excessively. So even though eating too many calories makes me gain weight, eating a little less calories won't, I'll, my body will prevent itself from getting too thin to maintain the muscle mass that I exercise for, and my metabolism will slow, so my thyroid will ratchet down a little bit, and my respiratory quotient, the amount of calories burned by breathing, will ratchet down a bit, my body temperature will lower a bit, my body has all these mechanisms it'll set into motion to not to waste calories, and therefore, a slower metabolism means I'm aging slower. The only way to age slower, the only fountain of youth, is to moderately caloric restrict so you can eat less calories and not get too thin. 
Most Americans think they should speed up the metabolic rate so they can eat more food and not get too fat. Isn't that what you've been told, most likely? How to read at least any women's magazines. How to, or pick up a book off the shelf of a bookstore. How to speed up your metabolic rate to lose weight, as if it's favorable to speed up your metabolic rate. That's like saying, die younger to lose weight. That would be a good book, bestseller. Every diet, almost every diet plan out there should have a sticker on it that says, lose weight but die younger. Warning, this diet may make you lose weight, but don't be prepared to die younger for it. We'll go into that in a minute, and how dangerous dieting is. But right now I'm telling you something different. I'm telling you that the battery in a flashlight maintains its charge when the flashlight's turned off. If you keep it turned on, the battery dies out. The slower metabolism means you're aging slower. And when you eat a diet so rich in nutrients and fiber, it suppresses your appetite and takes away your addictive drives to overeat. Here's a normal range of thyroid function. The lowest part of the thyroid normal range and the highest part of the thyroid normal range. You follow that? Let's put a line right down the middle. Low normal, high normal. Got that? In the low normal range, you have half the heart attack rates compared to those in the high normal range. Did you follow that? You want to speed up your metabolic rate, eat more food, or take drugs to speed up your metabolic rate, or look for some supplement or some magic cure that's going to make you, it's going to make you burn more calories and make you burn up your metabolic rate. You don't want to do that. You don't have to uncomfortably caloric restrict. You naturally desire less calories when your diet is high in fiber and high in phytonutrients. You know, fiber gets degraded by bacteria in the gut. And it turns some of that fiber into a compound called butyrate that sends negative feedback to the hypothalamus in your brain telling you to stop eating. There's multiple mechanisms you have to control your apostat. There's some mechanisms that ratchet up your apostat and other mechanisms that ratchet down your apostat. When you eat the right foods, it turns down your apostat and makes you not want to eat more food. You know, what if I had a buffet right here at the front of the room? And I'm inviting you to eat at my buffet. For you guys in this side of the room, as you take your place in line to fill your plates up at the buffet, I'm going to give you a tablespoon of olive oil to have while you're waiting in line. That's 120 calories for each tablespoon. And then I'm going to have the scientists weigh and measure everything you took on your plate and how much you ate so we can see if the 120 calories from olive oil had you take 120 calories less up here, or if it had no effect compared to people not giving the olive oil. And here's what I'm saying. I'm saying the olive oil gets digested so rapidly with no fiber, no space occupying or in the stomach, and no significant nutrient load that signals the brain that you will not take in less calories when you eat up here. You'll take in the same amount of calories, so all you did was add an extra 120 calories to what you normally would have eaten, thus shortening your life accordingly. Now you guys, waiting in line to eat, had an apple. To, I gave you an apple to eat when you were waiting in line. But the apple has fiber, moisture, pectin, and it holds space. The, the pectins and the fibers hold the water into it and occupy space in the stomach, and it contains certain nutrients that ratchet down the apostat. So that 65 calorie apple, the scientists will find that when you choose your menu up here and fill your plates at the buffet, you would have naturally eaten 65 calories less because you had the apple before the meal or as part of the meal. Did you follow that? Now what if though, instead of giving these people on this side of the room, these dummies that had the oil, what if you guys, instead of doing that, I hid the oil? And now, instead of giving you a piece of olive oil in line, you turned it down. I mixed the one tablespoon of olive oil into the food, into the salad, into the vegetables, into the grain, whatever you were eating. And now you had a hidden 120 calories of olive oil mixed in there. Now how many calories would the scientists figure out that you consumed? The 120 calories extra? Or? Or less? 
No, you will eat more. You eat more calories. Because oil revs up the apostat and makes you want to eat more calories because it rushes into the bloodstream so rapidly. It's the concentrated calories entering the bloodstream that signal dopamine receptors in the brain and it tells you to eat more food and now you eat 220 calories more, not 120 calories more. The foundational, the whole found, foundation of, of human health is, is being slim and not having fat on the body. And you've been scammed by the biggest scam ever been perpetrated on people in the world to have people convinced that oil of all types is a health food. Olive oil, canola oil, right? Flaxseed oil, coconut oil. You're pouring calories on your food, empty calories, putting fat on your body. It goes from the lips to the hips in five minutes flat. Right, stuck on there. We can take an electron biopsy of that waste and we can look under a microscope and we can say, oh yeah, there's that coconut oil there. There's pig fat. Really, that came from, wow, it must have been um, must have been some peanut oil there. There's a peanut oil right there. I can see it under the microscope. From your lips to your hips in five minutes flat, rapidly absorb calories, rev up fat storage hormones, and they rev up the brain's hormones to make you want to eat more food. They shut down your connectivity between your instinctual drive to eat and how many calories you need and gets it all mixed up so you become overweight. Okay, I'm going to start the lecture. <laughs> you guys ready? All right, let's do it.